So really quickly, uh, big week for retail. Tomorrow, Walmart will be uh, reporting. Home Depot will be reporting. Wednesday, we got Target and TJX, uh, you know, that has TJ Maxx under it. Kohl's on Thursday and uh, Ross on Thursday as well. So big week for retail. Big week, big week, big week. Yes. Yeah. And shout out to all my people. I got a bunch of messages, um, obviously, when when Disney reported last week. And they were like, Troy, yeah, Disney, man. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, patience. Um, so shout out to all the people that, uh, you know, took the information, executed on the information. As far as when it came to uh, to Disney, uh, I told you there was a stock that I believed in, a company I believed in. Obviously, they passed Netflix last week for a number of subscribers, and yeah. they're building out uh, new models to have revenue. Uh, and so we, they talked about how Disney Plus uh, has, has done extremely well, but making rated our content to now bring in more audience. They also talked about putting ad services in it as well um, and paying a higher price uh, for, the, for, for Disney Plus. But, and I'm thinking about, six to eight months they have a, a big decision to make on what they're going to do is when it comes to hulu i know they own 60 percent of it but comcast does own a percentage of it and so uh if they could figure out how they're going to structure that deal with comcast now that if they own 100 percent of hulu that can also 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 be integrated inside of disney plus and when we talk about one of the things that these streaming services fight for is live sports and we know hulu has live sports yeah and so now disney plus now will have live sports i know they already have espn um, and so they're, they're working on that uh, as well as another source of revenue. And if you've been watching ESPN and all the subsidiary channels, ESPN Plus and all these, you're, no, you're starting to notice that they have sports betting on TV, sports betting on TV. And so the next move in my eyes, I was like, all right, they're going to figure out a way how to monetize off people sports betting right from their home, right from yep. the channel. Um, so that'll definitely be another another way to generate revenue. Um, and it could hurt businesses like DraftKings and and um, Flutter, who has uh, FanDuel under under its umbrella. So that's an interesting thing to watch. But these things could happen, especially if you're streaming, right? Like they can control that. They have ESPN. You can just do it from your hand while watching the game. So shout out to everybody that was invested in Disney. Uh, and thank you. I got a bunch of messages. Uh, appreciate y'all. So Disney is in trouble. Disney. Before we go to questions, yeah. Disney. Uh, has become the number one paid streaming service. Mm-hmm. So we I put a post up about that last week. They own Hulu, sixty percent. Yeah, they own ESPN Plus, mm-hmm. um, and then Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they they've surpassed Netflix, and they're raising the prices of their subscriptions of all of them. Hulu's mm-hmm. prices is raised is raising, Disney Plus price is raising, and I think ESPN Plus has already raised its price. You think it's going? Yeah. Um, yep. They're raising their monthly prices on all of them across the board. Yep. Yeah. So um, what does this say about the streaming uh, space is... There's only going to be a few that survive. Well, who's going to survive? Who's not going to survive? Uh, is Netflix ne- going to die or not? Netflix will be the first one to die. Next one, <laughs> Netflix will be the first one to die. First to die. The first one. First one off the plane. <laughs> Netflix will be the first one to die. The first, like out of everybody. So when you, everyone talks about having a moat where it protects you, right? Which is great. But what happens when you have competitors that are circling your castle, and now they're attacking you from above, below, and in the middle? So now you have Disney, and all their infrastructure. You have Hulu, not a big player, but makes a significant enough impact. You have Amazon, Amazon mm-hmm. Fire Stick, HBO Plus, Paramount Plus. Netflix is ha- does not have enough content. And going back to the SoftBank, over-leveraging China conversation, if you spend too much capital and don't have a clear risk to return, you're in danger. So they were the leader for a long period of time. Stock went up. And when you drop as much as they have and went from 700 and now they're at 249, now, what happens if a few of these want to bundle up under one? And let's say Disney, it won't happen, but if Disney buys Paramount Plus and now you have everything under one app that mm-hmm. you want to access, there's no reason to have Netflix. And then outside of a few shows, there's nothing really on Netflix to entice you to really stay. Yeah. And they, they have, so like most people have an average of four of these streaming services. And so what you're saying is absolutely true because HBO and Discovery uh, just announced that they're going to combine. Uh, mm-hmm very shortly and so that that you, you're starting to see that you didn't even mention apple plus right so apple plus is a streaming service and we talked about what the revenue that they have right 
and having 92 billion in the war chest means that we could disperse some capital really to just put out the competition if they wanted to if they wanted and, to and, and, and we're and, leaving out the big one of yeah. youtube and, and youtube and we all i mean we we can't say it enough the thing that youtube and google right and disney haven't it's built in the win is already built in their audience continues to get younger yep. it's just going to continue like as more, more people have kids more people be introduced to disney characters they're even now producing like when we talk about original content like that Marvel studio, mm-hmm. like I just saw a commercial for She Hulk. I was like, damn, she got her own show. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw I don't, even, I don't even have a comic book, but like yep. they just have so many different characters that they can build. How many Star Wars shows have we seen already? Like, it's like it's it's endless. It really I mean, is endless. Look at it like this. If I said, Hey, I'm launching a company, and my main competitors are Disney, Apple, Google, Paramount, CBS, NBC. ABC, you would be like, Ian, I love you, but you better pick something else. <laughs> That's Netflix. And the, what's the thing that killed Blockbuster? It was not innovation. People were still buying those $19 DVDs and popcorn for six bucks. It was the, the amount of debt that they have. How much debt does Netflix have? And when the stock falls that much and people then are, this, well, I always tell you guys, basing your products on price is a mistake. Because now people are complaining about getting a $100 million show and the $2 increase is making people leave. What? Yeah. It's been in the water. Yeah. It'll be a few years. Somebody just said uh, Stranger Things. I'm like, yeah, Stranger Things is a great show, but the season's over now. And now you got to wait two and a half years for the next one. Guess what's going to happen in the next two and a half years? And them kids like 22 now. <laughs> they got to wait. I think that's what do a reboot. Saying. Like <laughs> uh, 11, 14, 15. Like them years went by quick. Little black kid, he's 6'3". He look like he LeBron James kid. Bro, y'all got to get another reboot. It takes too long. Two and a half years. I think the next season they have to mature, so they got to wait two and a half years for them to grow. And so it's like, all right, that's cool, but yeah. two and a half years is a long time. There's going to be a lot of content coming from all these other streaming services that's going to occupy the time of the users. And so they got to it's, – it's, it's an uphill battle. It's an uphill battle. But, they, you know, Netflix, it, it, they still have room for expansion, right? So like I know you put the coffin uh, clause on them, but they still have room for expansions from an international standpoint. They're not they're not in all countries throughout the world, so that could happen. They're, they're and not then gonna be in China, what work could they expand to? Africa, right? So you got to think about original content in that sense. So now people from those countries put their original content. Where are they housing it? That could be a play. So there's room for expansion for them, but it's got to be and clean up that debt though. Yeah. We, yeah. we we um yeah we were just talking about Africa at the TIA oh shout out to TIA craft yep shout out to, that's what I forgot to mention shout out to TIA craft we was in Martha's Vineyard with them um to Shonda uh she is the Duckett Brown Duckett Brown she is the CEO of TIA craft if you don't know what TIA craft is um I think they have one point three trillion dollars mm-hmm. of assets under management yeah. yep. Um, and yeah, she had, they have a black woman as a CEO. So we spent a couple of days with them and, uh, shout out to Derek. And, uh, he was saying that, um, and we already knew, but, you know, just kind of talking more in the corporate setting about Africa and why it's so important. Um, I believe it's going to have like 30% of the world's population in the next 50 years. It has 80- under 20, under 28, 30% of the population under 28. Uh, Nigeria is on pace to surpass America for uh, population. That's incredible. 80 something percent of Nigeria's population is under 21. And then like 90 percent of that is like under 18. Um, So the youth population in Africa is never seen anything like it in the history of the world. Um, this is TIA crap, obviously. Like I said, they're, they're already going through the numbers. They're explaining, they're explaining the numbers to us. So I said that to say, there's going to be a lot of opportunity in Africa, for sure. Um, so, yeah. Hence From a co- why China's investing so much there, too. We got to be careful. Oh, yeah, that's, why every, that's why everybody's investing there. Mm-hmm. Um, but from a content standpoint, from a media standpoint, there's a lot of opportunity. Because even when we went out there and uh, we went to Nigeria and, uh, you know, we was just checking out the landscape of like podcasting and different things of that nature. And it's still, it's still in its uh, infancy stages of podcasting and like streaming and different things of that nature. So the, uh, the opportunity. Don't say too much. 
<laughs> it's gonna be learn your leisure Africa. Why in one hour? Why they're gonna tag you? Watch. <laughs> Oh man. The remix come out quick, boy. <laughs> my graduates from my school being Forbes. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>